Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I have a fun Buffy the Vampire Slayer book tag for you. So because we are now fully into the Slayer Fest readathon, I thought it would actually be fun to go ahead and try to find a Buffy the Vampire Slayer book tag. I actually had no idea that there were any Buffy the Vampire Slayer themed book tags. That's one of the reasons why I created the readathon in the first place was because I had seen like literally nobody do a Buffy themed tag or a Buffy themed readathon. But when I got the idea for this video, I actually did some googling as you do. And so I found kind of a short, quick, fun one in the blogging world that I wanted to go ahead and do for you. And I will try to find it again and leave it down below if you are interested in participating and I will try to leave all the questions and stuff down below for you as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Question number one is Buffy, a character who lives a double life. And so right off the bat, I'm going to be cheating because I'm going to be talking about a fictional character, but it's not going to be a book character. It is going to be a television show character because one of my favorite television shows and television characters of all time is in fact one that leads a double life. And that is our big bad Walter White from Breaking Bad. If you're not familiar with the show, like first of all, where have you been? Second of all, stop this video and go watch it right now. All of it, all five seasons, do it binging. You've got nothing else better to do than to sit down and watch the show. But this follows our main character, Walter White, who at the very beginning of the show is a high school chemistry teacher and he is diagnosed with cancer. And he kind of suddenly realizes how lucrative the drug trade is. And so he decides that in order to help try to support his family after he passes away, he is going to manufacture and sell meth. And so you're following him in the first season and he, as he's kind of like a baby duck, like trying to walk, you know, he's trying to figure out this whole business and how he ends up kind of being like this big kingpin in the meth industry and all of the trouble that he gets into and it is phenomenal. It is just so well written and it is so engaging. I love this series so much. It has a very strong place in my heart and I will always 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 recommend this show. So I wanted to go ahead and just mention him here because how could I not? He lives the ultimate double life. Chemistry teacher by day, husband by day, father by day, and then drug kingpin by night and it was just phenomenal. And then for Willow, a badass witch, I could not answer this prompt any other way than by talking about our girl Manon Blackbeak from the Throne of Glass series. She is briefly introduced in Era Fire, but Queen of Shadows is really where she become more prominent, become more of a main character. She is definitely fierce, but yet you can see the heart in her. And I also, of course, love her dedication to her wyvern Abraxas, oh, who is just like the sweet baby cinnamon roll. And I'm concerned, y'all, because I haven't read the last two books in the series, and I'm concerned something bad happens to Abraxas. If you could please, in the comments down below, I don't care if it's a spoiler. I need you to tell me if Abraxas is alive by the end of this series because I just don't know if I can emotionally handle it. Oh my gosh. I hate when anything bad happens to an animal. Like if my beloved characters die, I'm going to be sad. But like if animals die, I'm just going to be absolutely devastated. But Manon is 100% my answer to this question. She is fierce and we love her. And then for Xander, the prompt is a character that provides comic relief. And for that, I actually have a really recent read. I want to talk about Mbot from Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I actually recently just read this. I haven't even wrapped it up yet. This is a YA science fiction and Mbot is basically the artificial intelligence that's within this crash spider plane basically that our main character Spensa finds and decides to fix up. And when she gets it booted she meets Mbot and Mbot is just fantastic. He has a really weird obsession with mushrooms because he's AI you know and he claims he doesn't feel or anything like that. He's got just this really weird way of saying things sometimes this really abrupt way of bringing facts to people's attention. He gets offended even though he can't be offended because he doesn't feel emotions and he was just wonderful. Mbot is truly the star of this story and I could think of no better character for this prompt than Mbot. Ben for Dawn is your favorite sibling relationship and I realized when trying to find books for this prompt that I actually don't read a lot of books featuring sibling relationships or I don't really have any that contain really notable or my favorite sibling relationships. So instead I'm going to talk about a book that features complicated sibling relationships that make it worth the read and I'm talking about Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins read. This follows the Revis children. I believe there are four or five of them in this story. Each of them get a different character perspective and it's following them in the days and times leading up to this end of summer big bash that Nina, one of the older siblings, throws every single year. And it's following the complications that they all have in their lives and with each other and their absent philanderer of a father. As always with any Taylor Jenkins read story, you're going to get very complicated dynamic characters with complex relationships and they're going to be well developed 
developed. They're going to be flushed out. You're going to feel like they're real. You're going to connect to them and it's just phenomenal. So if you are looking for a book with strong sibling relationships, this is going to be one to check out. Then for Angel, we have to find a character that is extremely broody. And for this, I think I'm going to go with Carden from The Cruel Prince. If you've read this, then you know this is a YA fantasy series that follows our main character, Jude, who is a human living in the land of the Fae. She's being raised by a Fae who killed her parents. And that's a whole different complicated dynamic. But she basically has to endure cruelties from like the prince in this realm. But it also follows her as she kind of finds her footing and she kind of becomes a badass in this realm and what she and this cruel prince end up doing to others and each other. And Cardin is definitely a very broody character. You know, he doesn't want anything to do with the throne or ruling the land or anything of that nature. And he certainly doesn't want anything to do with Jude, but yet he likes Jude. He has feelings for Jude. And so this is just like an overall wonderful YA fantasy series. And I highly recommend, but Cardin is definitely the epitome of a brooding character. All right. And then for Spike, we have to pick a character with a redemption arc. I'm going to just give a warning that this answer may be spoilery for the Nevernight Chronicles by Jay Kristoff. If you have not read Beyond Book One in the Nevernight Chronicles and you don't want to risk any type of spoilers whatsoever, I would definitely go ahead and click away until I'm done holding up this book. So my answer for this question is definitely going to be Ashlyn Yardheim from the Nevernight Chronicles. If you're not familiar with the story, the main character of the story is Mia Corberry, who is out for a mission of vengeance. When she was 10 years old, she watched her father hung for treason. Her mother and baby brother were taken away. Her mother was imprisoned and she believed her mother and brother were killed. And then she was sent away to be killed as well, but she escaped. She was taken under the wing of Mercurio, who was a former acolyte of the Red Church. And he kind of trained her up, got her ready for her time in the Red Church, where she could be formally trained as an assassin and she could take out the people that ripped apart her family. Ashlyn ended up being another acolyte at the Red Church. And in Nevernight, there was some stuff that went down. I really don't want to say more about that because there could be spoilers for Nevernight, but just know that by the end of Nevernight, Ashlyn definitely did need a redemption arc and she certainly got one in here and even more. You definitely grow to love Ashlyn as a character, especially with what she does for and means to Mia. And so I thought that she was the perfect character to satisfy this prompt. I'm also going to keep holding this up for the prompt of Tara, which is your favorite sapphic relationship. Again, this is another spoiler for this series, but Mia and Ashlyn definitely grow into something more, which I absolutely loved. And you can just see what that relationship does for Mia and how much it means to Mia. And it was just beautiful overall. So I want to go ahead and use Mia and Ashlyn as an answer for this question as well. But since I don't want to double up on books too often, I will go ahead and pick another one. And for a second answer to my favorite sapphic romance, I'm going to just hold up the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo, because if you know, you know, I don't really want to say anything more about it because that would definitely be spoilers for a book that is focused purely on the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. But if you know, you know. Then for Cordelia, a character that underwent major character growth, Andrea Oliver from Pieces of Her and Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter. Y'all know that I am trash for Karen Slaughter. I absolutely love her so much. She is the queen of dark, gritty, gruesome suspense thrillers. She is not afraid to put her characters through some darkness. She goes there. But Pieces of Her was one of my most disappointing reads of 2022. And it really led into the slump that I experienced last year, all because of the main character of that book, Andrea Oliver, who was one of the most useless, spineless, most frustrating characters I've ever experienced in a book in my entire life. I have never been so outwardly angry and frustrated by a character because she was just so weak and so useless. Anytime even anything remotely confrontational came about, anything remotely frightening, she would completely freeze and be unable to take any action or do anything. And this was throughout the entirety of the story. I would literally be listening to the story and gesticulating wildly because I was so upset about how useless she was as a character. I can't even explain it to you. That just the visceral disgust I had at Andrea Oliver as a character. And so when I heard that she was putting out a second book that was going to feature Andrea Oliver, I was naturally very trepidatious. I didn't want to read it. But luckily, this was very much almost again, like an redemption arc for Andrea Oliver, because she grows so much between that first book and this book. In this book, she has grown up a lot. She has really learned from everything that she experienced in the first book. She's actually now a federal US Marshal. And so she is far more capable and she is far more solid. Like she's not so easily disturbed. She's not so easily thrown off balance. And both her storyline in the present and then the past storyline in the story were fantastic. And I really loved this. So Andrea Oliver, for sure, because I thought that she was forever going to go down as one of my most hated characters of literature. But she definitely got a redemption arc in this one. She underwent major, major character growth. Then for Andrew, the prompt is a wannabe villain. And I tried really hard to think about wannabe villains, but I don't know if I just don't read enough books with these characters in there. But the only one that I could really think of was Malfoy. Malfoy in the Harry Potter series never fully struck me as a villain, even though in the 
end, like there was nothing that he really did to redeem himself or anything like that. He never fully struck me as a villain. He always just struck me as the puppet of his father. Like there were times when he was fully just kind of being the entitled brat of Lucius Malfoy. And there was also times when he was just kind of spouting his father's rhetoric. But you can just almost tell in a lot of points that he was starting to think for himself and starting to realize that maybe what his father believes isn't what he should believe. And I feel like you could definitely see that spark of something more. I definitely feel like he was a wannabe villain and then maybe even towards the end not even a wannabe villain anymore like he just he just didn't want to have anything to do with anything so I think Malfoy is a good answer to this question and then for the character of Faith a badass female character and for that I'm gonna go with our girl Selena Sardothian from Throne of Glass she is a kick-ass assassin that definitely comes into her own throughout the entirety of this series so if you read Throne of Glass and you're like not really impressed with Selena and her capabilities just continue to read like this is the very tip of the iceberg in terms of what she is capable of and I really just loved watching her character grow throughout the entirety of the series and just seeing her badassness shine so I'm gonna go with her and for Joyce a book mom you wish you could adopt and I again could not really think of another answer better than Molly Weasley from the Harry Potter series similarly with the sibling relationship question I just couldn't think of many books that I read with incredibly strong mother figures like mothers that were prominent throughout the story and I could also not think of any that I just wanted to like wrap in a hug you know I might be able to think of strong mother figures throughout the book but none that I just like want to cuddle and keep safe. Molly Weasley was like really the only one but Molly Weasley is definitely I feel like the epitome of the mom that you want growing up. She is herself the mother of several children so she knows what that's like to love and worry about all of these children but she's also the mom that takes in other people's kids. Like she and Arthur took in Harry Potter with no questions asked but also at the same time Molly Weasley is a fiercely protective badass mother and she is willing to go to the mat for her kids. She's willing to die for her kids, fight for her kids and she absolutely did in this story. So she was an equal combination of this loving, nurturing, supportive, kind woman, but she was absolutely that don't mess with my children, fuck around and find out kind of mother. And I just loved those two different dynamics about Molly Weasley. I feel like that's what makes her so incredibly special. And I feel like that's what really makes me want to just like wrap her in a hug and never let her go. Like she is precious and nothing bad can ever happen to her. And then for Giles, the prompt is to find a parental figure or basically somebody who kind of steps in and takes the role of a father figure in a book. I can definitely say Mercurio from the Nevernight Chronicles for this one. I could use that as an example because Mercurio definitely takes Mia in after she's lost her entire family. He takes her under his wing and definitely fuels the fires of vengeance that she has within her soul. But in an effort to keep a little bit more variety in this tag, I also thought that Borich from Assassin's Apprentice would be a good example of this as well. This is an adult fantasy series that follows our main character Fitz Chivalry Farseer from a time when he was a very young boy when he was just, I think he's like five or six years old at the start of the story he is basically dropped off at the door of the keep of the royal palace and he is told we don't want to deal with this kid anymore he is the bastard son of the king in waiting and y'all need to do something with him and Boric is I don't know what the main term for him is but he oversees the hounds and things like that for the prince in waiting and he kind of takes in fits and protects him throughout the entirety of the story and just looks out for him and so I thought that he would be a really great option for this prompt as well then of course the prompt for Oz is a book featuring a werewolf and for this the only one that I really thought of was Cry Wolf by Patricia Briggs. This was the very first book in her Mercy Thompson series. This was one of those paranormal series that I started and just decided not to stick with. It wasn't because there was anything egregiously wrong with the stories. In fact, I really enjoyed the first two books that I read for the most part, but they're just one of those things that like don't really stick with me. There's nothing substantial about them and they just get somewhat repetitive over time. And there was like three different creatures in love with Mercy in this. She had like a werewolf over her, she had a vampire over her, and then she had like somebody else over her. And I was just like, why? What is this? You know, what is going on here? So I just really wasn't doing it for me overall, but I did enjoy this very first book, Cry Wolf. Again, there are definitely werewolves within this story. If this sounds like something that's up your alley, if you like paranormal romance, this might be one that you want to check out. Then for Anya, the prompt for this is a character you tried to love, but couldn't, which I think is really interesting. As a prompt for Anya, whoever created this tag must have not really liked Anya all that much. But my answer for this question is going to be Sadie Green from Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Y'all, this book has certainly been making the rounds in the online bookish community. This was book of the month, book of the year. It is definitely a highly praised and well-regarded story. And let me tell you that when I started this story, I was invested 
in it. I had never read anything by Gabrielle Zevin before. I was absolutely loving her writing and I knew this was going to be a character driven story which is what I truly love. This is about two old friends who reconnect and they come together to build a video game that becomes extremely popular. They create a video game company, they start pumping out more video games and they become very very successful people by the time they're like 25 years old. But of course as is the case with any long-term relationship there are complications that exist between the two and things kind of fall apart and go from there. I feel like Gabrielle Zevin did this book dirty. I feel like this could have been such a stronger book had she decided to make Sadie Green a better character but Sadie Green was just so flipping infuriating. So there is a point in this book where she has made a determination about Sam's character and I don't even know how she came to this determination in the first place because it's not even something that I personally saw myself. Like she thought that she knew something about Sam which wasn't even entirely accurate and it was not even ever proven but she was sure that she knew this one thing about Sam and that completely unraveled his character in her eyes and she thought that he was just the most selfish self-serving individual and she started to really pull away from Sam and the business like she would do what she had to do but she didn't want to really interact with Sam and then things got further complicated in this story when Sadie develops a romantic relationship with Marx who was one of Sam's best friends and he also had a role in the video game company but then something happens to Mark and Sadie kind of loses herself in her grief and she disconnects entirely from Sam from the video game company she basically moves away starts a new life and that's it like that's really it Sadie ends up becoming this selfish self-serving character that she blamed Sam for being and she just became the worst character in this story my hatred for Sadie absolutely lowered my enjoyment of the story and it lowered the star rating that I gave the story this could have easily been a 4.5 five star book I ended up giving it a four but it was a very very complicated four like even now when I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking about my distaste for Sadie I want to give it like a 3.5 but because it's such a memorable and well-written story overall, I do believe it deserves four stars. It's just Sadie was an awful character. I hated her, especially in the second half of the story and some of the actions and the selfish choices that she decided to make and how she just completely disconnected herself from Sam. And when eventually they reconnect and Sam was like, I want to make another video game with you. She's like, I don't think that's a good idea, Sam. We're toxic for each other. Why, Sadie? That was all your thinking. Like, I don't even think Sam ever did anything to make you feel that way. But yet you're constructing these things in your mind that aren't true. Like I just had a really big problem with Sadie and the way that Gabrielle Zevin took this story and it really affected my enjoyment of it overall. So I really tried to like Sadie. I just could not get behind her. And then the final prompt is the first evil, the ultimate bookish villain. And for this, I just basically thought of most of the characters in Game of Thrones, particularly Cersei and Lannister. I just feel like there are so many amazing book villains in this story. Cersei Lannister definitely being one of them, but there are a lot of very unlikable, morally gray, vicious characters in this story. So this contains a lot of great characters that would satisfy this prompt. All right, that is it. Those are my answers to this Buffy the Vampire Slayer book tag. Like I mentioned, I will try to leave the blog down below where I got the questions for this prompt so that you could participate if you want to. I would love to hear some of your answers to these questions down below in the comments so please feel free to answer some of them down there. And as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give this a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week sometimes three if I have my shit together and a third video to film and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.